Hi, and welcome to our video on slope and y-intercept. In the last video, we introduced slope and discussed how slope really calculates the steepness between any two points on a graph. Right here, this is a, uh, an application on math open reference. It's really great. And you can you know, play with these points as you move them around. What am I changing about this blue line? Well, I'm changing the slope. Right, because what's happening is as I move these two points, I change their distance in y and their distance in x. Right, how far apart they are in the x direction, right, and how far apart they are in the y direction. And that relationship is slope. Now, now how do we actually calculate that? Well, in the last video we discussed that a simple way of calculating delta y, or dis distance in the y coordinates, right, delta y, and delta x, the, the difference in the x values of the coordinates, is to look at, well, the, the distance, or subtract. Basically take one of the y variables and subtract it from the other between your two points, and do the same with the x. Subtract the x values. And this will tell you the rise, right, because the y values, that goes how high and how low a point is, and the run how far left or right our point is. We talked about how to actually apply this. We also looked at fun situations where if we have a vertical slope, right? When this happens, slope is undefined because these two points have the same x value, right? They're both at 20. So if you look at our formula, when you subtract the x's, it's gonna be 20 minus 20, right? We don't know what the y values are, but when we calculate the slope of those two points, will have something for delta y. But looking at delta x, if they're the same number and we subtract, well, anything minus itself is zero. So even though we don't need to calculate the delta y, we know it's going to be something divided by zero. And anything divided by zero is undefined, right? Undefined, oh boy, sorry, undefined. That's why the, the slope, if it's vertical, if it's the line going up and down, we call it undefined. However, we also talked about a zero slope. Well, here, if we take our line and, and we go like this, we make it a horizontal line, it's not going up or down. We call this a zero slope. And it's easy to see once you realize that they're at the same height. I should adjust this a little bit. Right? A and B are both at the same height. So what's going to happen there? We're going back to our back to our slope formula. If our y values are the same, right, and our x values are different, right, we don't know what x2 minus x1 will be exactly for any two points. But since the y values, the heights, are the same for both points, again, anything minus itself is zero. So we'll have zero minus some difference between two x points, and zero divided by anything is zero. So, you know, if we set up a graph here, let me use a different color, if we set up any graph with the y and x, we know that a line like this will have a zero slope, right? m will equal zero. But if we have a line like this, a vertical line, anywhere, then our slope is undefined. And that's, a, that's an important thing to think about. Um, also, we talked about how if our line is going in a sense, up like this. So as x goes up, y goes up, that m is positive. It's a positive slope. But if we reverse that, if as x increases, right, as we go higher and higher on our x-axis, our points become lower and lower, right? If I go here, I go down all the way to this point. But if I go up a little bit more on the x-axis, the line's even further down. If that happens, if there's kind of that inverse relationship where as x increases, y decreases, we call that a negative slope. So in this video, we're going to use all that information about slope and calculate both slope and what's called the y-intercept all into the line of an equation, which we'll introduce here. Um, every line, right, except for vertical lines, of course, can be written as mx, y equals mx plus b. And all this is saying, right, the m, that's our slope, and the b is the y-intercept value, the y-coordinate value, 
intercept. Oh boy. All this is saying is you can represent any line, with the exception of a vertical line, by finding the slope, multiplying it by your x value, and then adding the y intercept, and that'll give you a y value. And that's a mouthful right there. But this is a tool that we can use to quickly find right, the equation to represent any line. All we have to do is find the slope and plug that number in here, and then find the y-intercept and plug that number in there. And I'm not going to talk too much about why this formula makes sense here in this video. I'm going to start giving you examples and walking you through it so you can gain a good sense of what's happening. That's our goal here for you to gain a, a sense or an instinct with this equation. So let's try some examples. So what do we have first? Okay, so let's say you're giving these two points, B and A, and you're asked to find both the slope and the y-intercept and write out the equation of a line. What do you do? Well, the first thing to do is to find what are these two points, A and B. B is at 40 and then up 30, so it's 40, oops, 40, 30. A is where? Well, it's 20, 20. So we want to find the slope, and that again just means the rise and the run between these two points. So if I start at A, how much do I go up the rise and go over to get to B? Well, well I go up what? You can even see it right here. We go up 5, 10, so delta Y is equal to 10, right? And the horizontal or run distance here is 5, 10, 15, 20. That means delta x equals 20. And I could have gone the other way, right? I could have, I could have thought, well, what's the, the run? It's a different color. What is the run? And then the rise. Well, that would still be the same because the run, is, you can see this rectangle here. The run is still 20 and the rise is still 10. So I'm not worried about that. I can look at it either way. And then if I didn't have this picture and I was just given the points, sometimes they'll do that. They'll just give you these points. What you can do then is set up your equation for slope because slope equals delta y or delta x. So we would choose a y value here, let's say 30, and subtract 20 from it and put that over, those are our delta y's, 40 minus 20. You want to keep that order. I mean, you can start with either point, but if you start with b, always put the b values first. 30 minus 20 is 10, 40 minus 20 is 20. So this means our rise is 10 and our run is 20, which is what we found out. We would reduce this and get a slope of 1 half. And all this means, of course, is, is if I was to reduce this slope into a smaller or equivalent fraction, instead of going up 10 and over 20, I could go up 1 and over 2. It's a little hard to see in, in, in this graph, right? But if I went up 1, about here, and I went over, how far is that? Well, that's up 1 and over 2. And I think I messed up the picture a little bit down here. That slope is a smaller, it's an equivalent ratio as the larger one, just written on a smaller scale. I mean, we could also write other equivalent fractions. We could write, instead of 1 over 2, 5 over 10. That's the same thing. We usually reduce it, though. And let's look at 5 and 10. It's a little bit easier to see with this grid right here. If I go up 5, it's saying I go over 10 to get to the next part of the line to follow the slope. And there it is. You can see that one a little bit easier. So the goal is, if you're given two points, find the slope between them, right, by, by subtracting their y and x values, and then reduce it. And it gives you the simplest form, I, I would say, of, of the slope for this line. Now you have to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is just a point where the line intercepts or crosses right, the y-axis. That's called the y-intercept, and we use the variable b. Now, you should be clear, though, the y-intercept will have some, some point value, right? It's on the y-axis, so the coordinate, the first value, is, is always 0. Think about that, because this is the x value of a coordinate. If you're on the y-axis, the x value is always 0, anywhere up or down here. The second number is some number, and that's b. So that's where the b comes in. 
we use that to represent the second right ordinate value of this point, the y value. If I remember correctly, it's called the abscissa. So we have to find that. How do we do it? Well, we can look at the graph, and it looks like it hits at 0, 10. So I'm going to guess for now that b is at 10. But we don't need to guess. We can calculate it. How? Remember that the form of a line is y equals mx plus b. We know what m is, so let's rewrite this. y equals 1 half x plus b. So now we actually have everything we need to find b. Why? Because we know some of the points on the line. And those points can be plugged into the x and y values, right? Because every point has an x and a y. So we can plug those values in, and then there will only be one missing value, and that's the b value. So let's do that. x is, I'll choose this point a, x is 20 times a half. That equals y, which is also 20 at this point. Okay, that plus b. So now we solve. What's 1 half times 20? Well, that's just 10. This is equal to 20 still. 20 equals 10 plus b. What does b equal? Well, b will equal 20 minus 10. And that's b. 20 minus 10 is 10. So b is 10. And all I'm doing, again, is I'm plugging in these point values. If you know any point on the line, you can plug it into your equation, right? And if you have the slope, and we'll get into this later, but if you have a point and a slope and a point, you can always find the, the, the y-intercept. So here, we can finally write our equation for this line. y will equal 1 half x plus 10. And that represents this line right here. I think I'm running out of time. In the next video, we'll look at some negative slope and other examples.